What's going on, everybody? It is Jay Wilson, and it's 6 p.m. on Monday, the 19th of April. And uh, yeah, about to have some fun tonight because we're going to be talking about something that I truly believe needs to be corrected um, in our hobby. And we're going we're gonna to dive deep into it, and I want to hear your thoughts as well. Just kind of understanding where I'm coming from and really what has drawn me to this video. And I wasn't sure what we were going to talk about today because I've got to do an update on the Congo tank in terms of adding more plants. You know, I'm wearing this fancy shirt from keepfishkeeping.com. There's a link up in there. And uh, yeah, there's so many things. Hit the subscribe button, share this video and hit that like button. It really helps the channel. I got some videos that do really well and then some of my content's not very good. <laughs> so we deal with it. But if we don't change the way we do this, it's going to be a problem. So let me preface and we're, this is what we're talking about tonight. So if you've got questions or you've got ideas, throw them into the comments. That's the idea. I spend quite a bit of time on social media. One, for work. Uh, it's my career. I do the social media for CJ. I do my own stuff so that I can have a little bit of, you know, entertainment, residual income, the, the whole YouTube, the branding thing. Um, and I work with a lot of folks that really help the aquarium hobby. And I'm talking information, videos, how to step by step guides. A lot of people. And then there is forums, there's Facebook groups, there is a plethora of fast spitted, regurgitated, vomited, diarrhea information that is pushed out to us from a lot of different sources. And what really triggered this big frustration was I happened to be scrolling through Facebook. I, I don't even remember what day it was. It was a couple of weeks ago. And there was this guy and he posted a picture of his tank. And that's the tank that is the thumbnail of this video. And he has had the tank running for six weeks plus. And it looks just like that. And It's horrible. For a lack of better terms, it's horrible. Um, I do like to thank everybody that's here, um, you know, just enjoying this video and where we're going. Um, if anybody has any questions regarding what we're talking about, you know, drop it in the comments. But, you know, definitely great to see some, some you know, the regulars, the Cunningham, Craigers, Chris Biggs, everything, Wendy, Deborah, you know, Tiffany White. I, I really appreciate you folks and all the other ones that are here. But more importantly, share this video because folks are gonna wanna see this. So I'm watching this person ask a question in a Facebook group that's local. And the questions that people were asking were ridiculous. The answers that this person was getting to help his aquarium was absolutely heinous, silly. When they say there is no dumb questions, they're right. But there are some dumb answers. And it's really just regurgitated answers. And I hate to say it, but it's reality. It really is reality. We have to stop saying things just to say them because it makes us feel empowered. Okay? We have to stop giving advice that sucks. Big thing. If the advice sucks, stop it. Stop it. And I'm going to get to some examples of how this person got to this point. And it came from so many different sources, which makes it even more difficult to really help this person. So I reached out to them privately and I said, do you really want to fix your tank? And they're like, yeah, it's in my living room and I, I, I can't figure it out. And I, I'm doing all of these things. Uh, can you help me? And I said, where do you live? He happens to live 40 something miles from me. So last night 
I drove to his house. I did. Just wanted to really figure out what was happening to this person's aquarium. And I could have did this over the internet, but because he was relatively close, I decided, hey, it was probably a good idea to go there and show him how to really take care of an aquarium. Now you're gonna go, oh, okay, Jay, you're a big shot. Huh? You do, do two, three videos on YouTube, got a, got a minute following, and now you're some expert, never claimed it. Never claimed I was an expert. But what I can tell you is I could diagnose smelly turds from good information. I don't know. I'm like a shark in open water when I smell blood. It's like we can fix these issues. But there's a way that we can fix these issues. There is a way as hobbyists, as folks that could provide information or folks that are receiving information, we can also do something better to better equip ourselves to have a better understanding of our aquarium or our fish. And it's very simple. And we are going to get to that specific thing. And we're going to start with some analogies. So I go to his house, lets me in, and I look at the aquarium and I go underneath the aquarium and I pull out all of the things. And I ask very simple questions. Have you tested your water? How do you do your water changes? What have you been doing? And you know, I was surprised that a lot of the stuff that he was getting in terms of information was coming from his local fish store. And a lot of them were horrible, horrible. This guy had a vision of a planet tank. He had about five inches of dirt inside his aquarium, his fluval stratum. He had some mollies, some guppies. He's got a castle in it. He had a bubbling wheel turner thing from colonial times. And he had about seven terracotta pots and some plants strung out. Mind you, there's over a hundred dollars worth of plants in this aquarium if you look at the thumbnail. Matter of fact, I'm gonna show you. I'm not gonna give this, this person's information out because it's not my place, but the place that I have is I started to understand where he was coming from. So here's the aquarium. Looks like somebody dumped a bunch of tea. Mind you, there are zero pieces of driftwood in here. So the tannins, not really there. I think a lot of it has to do with an abundance of things. Store tells them, boom, got to do this, got to do this, got to do this. Nobody told him about die off in plants. So he's got all these plants. He thinks they're dying. He doesn't know what he's doing. So he's getting information from another source that says, well, you should probably dose a bunch of things. So you're having some problems. Let's just go ahead and do some sprinkles and some things. So now he's overdosing potassium. He doesn't even have a water conditioner and he's utilizing public water supply. Luckily, his public water supply isn't bad. The store told him stability from Seachem was the perfect solution to a great water conditioner. I think not. It's a perfect solution to help cycle your tank in a couple weeks, which he didn't follow the directions because he went off the directions from the store. And then he goes off the directions of about 32 other people because he's drowning and he's seeking advice from anybody that's willing to provide him some information. You need to add more flow. The dude had a Fluval 407, and if anybody has, and, and I've used FX6s, FX5s, 4s, and I like them. However, the 407 is designed to be a 300-piece puzzle to the aquarium hobbyist. Nobody tells him what to do. We pop it open. It's jam-packed full of things. His flow was reduced. He had the spray bar that goes from left to right of what was a 65 gallon. I didn't measure it, but it looked more like a 55. It doesn't matter either way. Four or five inches worth of substrate, 
all of these things in this aquarium. He had a power head. I mean, it, it literally looked like October in Hawaii for the big wave competition in this aquarium. And then he had the water dropped about three inches to provide even more surface agitation with a ton of air on the left side and a ton of air on the right side. The tank really hasn't fully had an opportunity to settle. He's got more aeration than there is with an oxygen tank hooked up to your face. And really his guppies, his mollies, his loach, his all of his things, you know, his living creatures in there are just like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they don't know what to do. And so I was trying to understand what was happening and what led him to this point. He could have left the aquarium hobby. He didn't have a short of information and he sure as heck didn't have a short in a budget because he said, dude, I am pumping money into this thing and I don't like it. I don't like the way it looks. I had a vision and it's not there. And everybody was just steering him around certain things. Now, look, I get it. As an aquarium shop, I sell products to aquarium shops. Their way to survival and to provide food for their family and to keep employees employed is to sell products. I'm not talking about that. Sell those products because those products work. But when you sell things that have nothing to do with the issues at hand, you have done three things. You have disserviced the customer. You have disserviced the industry and you have disserviced yourself because maybe you didn't provide enough information to your employees. Maybe you didn't provide the real information because you were having a bad day to this brand new aquarium keeper. Or maybe you were the person clackety clacking, don't come back in on their keyboard and you were just like, well, he's an idiot or she's an idiot. Meanwhile, you suck just as much. I am also in that same boat. I have been there. I may have provided information that wasn't proper once or twice. But at the end of the day, we have to do better at providing the right information at the right time and stop just giving information based on some crazy thought. Folks, the analogy is you go into the doctor and you say, my eye hurts. And the doctor goes, hmm, let me check that bad boy out. Hmm, okay, I'm going to prescribe you this, okay? Because based on what you told me and, you know, I've been a doctor for a long time. We're going to go ahead and get you fixed up. Here's some ointments. I huh? squirt the ointments in your eye for three days, right? A day goes by and you're like, man, this ointment isn't working. So you go to doctor number two, got an eye issue, huh? Uh, don't know what's happening. All right. Well, um, are you taking anything? No, no, I'm not taking anything that's working. All right. Well, I'm going to provide you with this, this, and this, and this should help clear it up. Boom. Week goes by nothing's happening. So now you go to a third doctor and you're trying all these different things, right? Because you weren't getting the information. So as the hobbyist, we want more information faster to fix our stuff. Uh, hate to tell you folks, but patience is a big thing. Nothing, nothing happens overnight. Nothing. Nothing in the way of an aquarium being set up or an eye issue going away is going to, I don't know, take 24 hours to correct. So first, as hobbyists, we have to slow down. We have to understand that although it is 2021 and there are things that help us go much faster, it's a process. The nitrogen cycle is just that. It's a cycle that keeps revolving, right? And so we have to understand that we have to pay attention to that cycle revolving and stop skimping out because we're trying to save a buck here or there because you know, you have a car and you're like, 
I want the best GIPs that you have. I want 32 inch screen. I want to see all of the maps. Bam. I just want it in my face and I also need four tires. But uh, what's your cheapest set of tires? Do you realize that your four tires are the only thing that touches the ground when that car moves? And you're going to cheap out on it. So the analogy is if anything is the heartbeat or the movement or what keeps your aquarium in motion, you shouldn't cheap out on. Yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and uh, just going to get this used one over here. If it's a great deal and it's a good product, go for it. But remember, we have to take a little bit of understanding that things are a little bit more pricey when you're going after quality, no matter what it is. All right. And then we have to understand that nothing happens overnight. Now, he is dosing a million different things. So as a hobbyist, he's doing what he's told. However, he's going to a million different places. And folks, anything that I'm telling you can be applied with anything you do. A DIY project in your house, washing your car, fixing a scratch. Stop just, it's almost like we're at a buffet of information and we don't stop until we're so full that we're sick. And it's hurting us. As human beings, we are taking in far too much information from far too many sources. So I'm, I'm talking to him. I'm gaining information. I said, have you ever tested your water source? He's like, no. Has anybody told you that it's probably a good idea to test your water source? No. So you've just been testing your aquarium and you have zero nitrates and you don't know why. You have fish. You have quite a, I mean, you, you had enough fish to be producing some waste. He wasn't even, he, he listened to the store, right? Because we put this thought that this person is an expert that is standing in front of me. And we take zero accountability as human beings to go, you know, maybe they don't know everything, but they have enough information to help us. So as hobbyists or as somebody getting into something, we also have to understand we want to ask the right questions for us. Not the easy questions. We have to stop trying to get everyone to do everything for us. Seriously, we can make things easier on ourselves, but we have to understand that there is some work that has to be done from us. Yes, that person may have been doing this. It's like Dave Hale. Everything I talk about, I'm like, I'm doing this 30 years. Ah, I get it. Things change. Things evolve. Practices become better. Science that was once was 25 years ago, this is science, has changed. Things change. Things evolve. Things get better. Things get worse. It's an ever constant flow of information. And if we don't understand what is and what isn't anymore for anything, it's going to suck. So this guy was taking everything that was given to him and implementing it. Now, part of it was his fault because he wasn't going, you know what? That doesn't make any sense. And another thing is he wasn't reading any labels. I said, dude, you have pristine and you have stability from Seachem. Stability is not a water conditioner. It's a bacteria that helps you cycle your aquarium with another product. And pristine is a bacteria that helps break down organics to help keep your aquarium cleaner. What? And then he was dosing potassium. And then he had regulator because folks were talking about the pH. This guy was chasing everything and just wanted right answers. So the idea is as, as human beings, a two liter bottle of soda is cheaper than a 20 ounce bottle of soda really anywhere. But it's the convenient factor. We want the convenience so we can continue going through our day because there's not enough time in our day to do all of the things. 
Stop doing so many things. We're building a home. We're getting information that is taking far too long because we have to go through three people. And in between there, there are people that are doing far too many things. And if we don't ask the right questions as the folks that are putting our hard earned money into a process and saying we're trying to protect ourselves from everything that is not right, well, we could go down a path that we'll be very unhappy with. And that's where this guy was. So I told him, look, we're going to develop a plan. And now you're going to stick to one or two sources of information. And that's what we have to do as human beings. You know, there's so many things, so many people. What are there? Seven billion, eight billion people in the world. How many YouTube videos are out there? How many forums are out there? How many Facebook groups are out there? Everybody's Facebook group's better. Everybody's video is better. Everybody's store is better. But at the end of the day, it's only better if they provide you the information that you need to complete what it is you need to get done. So I asked him, what is it that you need? I mean, look, Corey Hecker just jumped in. There's Lowe's and Home Depot. They provide you the same things, but they do it differently. You walk into Home Depot. I feel like I'm walking through a landscape mill yard, right? Everybody looks disgruntled. It's very dim. It's very different. And it's like, hmm, Home Depot. When you go into Lowe's, it's brighter. It's cleaner. It feels better, right? They're providing two different experiences, And you're going to get two different types of information. You go to Lowe's, you're going to get the homeowner, the DIY, right? At Lowe's, we provide you landscaping, right? And it's the way it is. And at Home Depot, it's like, are you a do-it-yourself contractor, right? It has that different feel. And so you have to find what works better. Some people prefer Walmart. Some people prefer Target. It really is the same way. You have to find what it is you are looking for and utilize that information. We have to stop consuming information like we are at a Chinese buffet for $7.99 and we're not going to stop until we are sick because you're only going to kill more and more fish. You're only going to kill more and more of your money. You're only going to ruin more and more of your time with an experience that really can be amazing. So Bentley is saying, so he wanted answers, but asked the wrong questions and didn't provide the full picture, likely and unintentionally. What was the actual problem? No, he was providing information, but nobody was helping this guy understand that you need the whole scope. Nobody once asked him for his water parameters. Nobody asked him how long his aquarium was normal until it was like this. Nobody asked the right questions to get to the root cause because there really is only one root cause. So when I showed up, we drained the tank 50%. We actually rescaped the tank. Now the tank looks like that scaped more open space, what he wants. This is right after we filled it up. We cleaned the aquarium. We got rid of the pH regulator. We got rid of the pristine. We got rid of the potassium. We explained how plants, when you take them out of an environment, put them in an aquarium, that sometimes you have die off. He thought he was doing something wrong. So he's just cutting stuff up, throwing potassium in, trying to figure it out. He was using another product too that I told him to stop. And then the filter, I don't know if the filter was even capable enough of filtering it properly. So we added another one in the time being to see what will happen. And then I said, listen, you're only going to add stability and prime for 10 days. Your fish seem to be doing okay. We took a ton of the air stones out because you don't need 30,000 different air stones and we kept everything simple. 90% view, 10% touch. Check your filters, clean out all the polishing every three days, and then let's do a water change once a week at 50%. We're going to do this for two weeks and see if we gain ground. If we don't gain ground, then we know that there's two causes after this point. We know that after testing the water, because we did test, and guess what? There was nitrates in his water. He wasn't testing properly because he was going based off of what folks said. And then you have to understand that there are some things that have to be done specifically to a T. 
Because if not, you won't get the results that are actually what you need to see. Not your wannabe results, but your real results, which should be your desired results. So we got two weeks that we're going to be paying attention to this. And it's either going to be he doesn't have enough filtration and he doesn't really, he didn't set up his aquarium properly. There's far too much dirt in there. He added gravel. He was vacuuming the gravel like crazy, causing a lot of this mixture to pop up. He thought it was too much dead plants. He thought maybe it was tannins. And at the end of the day, it's come down to he didn't really let his tank do its thing. It has to. It really does. Most of the time, if we give our aquarium some time, it's going to correct that problem unless it's, a, it's an issue of sick fish or something we introduce that we can correct. But nothing can be corrected really fast. This guy's telling me to get to the point. The point is we have to stop giving BS information. And as hobbyists, we need to stop just allowing folks to give us BS information. When you need something diagnosed, let it go. It's like taking your car to a dealership and saying, I've got a noise and it sounds like this. Find it. We want to, Wendy just said it, it's a slow dance. We want to give them, you know, we want the now syndrome. It's the difference bef than crumping, whatever crumping is, than doing a nice waltz. It takes time. A lot of this stuff takes time. And I will tell you, there are people out there that just want to give you bad information. They love it. And there are people out there that are truly trying to help you, but you're not helping yourself by just saying, what could this be? Could be a hundred different things. So if we, re I, I, Bentley said it was sarcasm. I absolutely know it was sarcasm. I really do. I wasn't taking any offense to it at all. What I do take an issue with is, you know, you have all these companies that provide a service, right? And I'll, and I'll use names. You have um, a Bentley. Thank you for popping in. But you have all of these companies that provide a service. You have a bulk reef supply for saltwater. You can buy stuff from them if you're a freshwater folk. And you can look at their website and they've set up a ton of information on how to start a tank and how to keep it running and doing all of these great things, right? And then you have folks like myself, keepfishkeeping.com and KG Tropicals. You have um, folks like Aquarium Co-op, you've got folks like Aquari you know, uh, King of DIY that shows you how to build stuff. You had folks like uh, Serpa Design that shows you how to create things out of really so supplies that you have around your house. But each one specifically sets in a genre. Corey can tell you something about keeping an aquarium that for you may be completely wrong. For you, I could tell you something that could be completely wrong for you. So at the end of the day, as a hobbyist, you need to really think about what it is that you want to do. And then when something is going wrong, my best advice to you, my best advice is when you are seeking information, hone in to a couple of folks that can help you. Because the less information we get from multiple different sources, the faster we can get to the root cause of what is happening. We have an abundance of information. We have this weird mindset that we need everything right now. We have no time to wait. And we're not gonna spend any money on anything because at the end of the day, It's supposed to be free. So Jim M said, if you listen to 10 YouTube videos and seven say the same thing, it might be right. A absolutely. What I'm saying is don't stop watching those YouTube videos. I watch a ton of different folks in a ton of different genres for a ton of different things. But when I'm seeking information, I really want to look for the correlations, right? There's always a root cause of something. 
There always is a root cause of something. But what can happen is if there's a root cause and we have five different ways to try to fix it, we've just masked the root cause. What's the old saying? There's a, a ton of ways to skin a cat. Horrible saying, by the way. But if we took one issue that could be rectified by one simple thing and we take five different places to get information with five different ways to do it, and that person goes, well, one didn't work, two didn't work, three didn't work, and four and five seem to be very similar. I'm going to try those. Well, we really didn't fix the situation. We took way more time, way more effort, way more money with a way slower outcome because we wanted it right now and we didn't give either one, two, three an opportunity to work. So it's a two-way problem. It's with anything. And then the information that is absolutely wrong can't be retracted. I'm sorry. It's with anything. It's with TV. It's with fish. It's with cars. It's with how to do a project online, how to build super glue or how to make slime. It doesn't matter if it's wrong and a million people take in that information and they go, oh my goodness, that was wrong. They can go back in and change it. It doesn't matter. So as content providers, as information givers, we have to be better and more diligent about what we do. Now you can evolve, but we need to really be laying the fundamentals out properly. And then as consumers of that information, we have to be understanding that A, B, and C could be far different methods that lead you to the same thing, but you have to stay the course. It really is that simple. You could be starting a cycle and say, I'm going to do it all naturally, right? All naturally. I'm going to wait the four to six weeks. I will not do that anymore. I just won't, but some folks want to do it, but they get three weeks in and they're very impatient. So then they decide to try another method. And, and for some reason, something is counteracting that method. And now that method didn't work for that person, but that wasn't the case. Scientifically, they, there was bacteria potentially blocking each other or they were moving all the phosphates and it wasn't converting, but they don't have a, a stethoscope, stethoscope. They don't have a microscope. They don't understand what's happening in that aspect. They just think, well, it didn't work. This is the problem. For all the good internet and social media bring, they also bring not so good. So many people give and get horrible advice, but they feel it's correct. Finding trusted people isn't easy. I don't know. I guess that's for anything, right? And there's conspiracies and there's, there's false information. There's, you know, the haters, there's the entrepreneurs there. I mean, there's so many different things and you're right. Yeah. There's satire. I mean, I see folks, for instance, that'll share stuff, you know, on social media for anything. And the headline is, um, we're good at giving wrong information. And then people are like, oh, this isn't right. This is wrong, right? But, but we're, we're consuming it because it's good for us or for that person because maybe it was humorous or it was funny. It doesn't matter. Um, what's difficult about our hobby is that there are several right ways, but it may not be the right method for them. Wendy brings a good point. Um, there are several ways to do something. It may not be the right way, right? What is the right way? But there may be several ways to get us to the place that we need to go. But as we're driving, perfect analogy. We want to get to point B, right? We're at point A, but ooh, C has a good idea on the road. We're going we're gonna to go to C because eh, it's not too bad over there. So we head to C and we're like, wait a minute. Crap. This is taking way longer. I'm going to go back to A. And then I'm going to go to B, right? We've just taken much longer where if we just followed A to B, we'd be okay. It was MapQuest. It was Google Maps. It was Waze. It was Apple. It was TomTom, right? There are all ways to get to somewhere, but everybody provided their own way to get there. Garmin, I think, had one too. I don't remember. But at the end of the day, it, that's the analogy, right? You stick to what works for you. And it's very hard to find that. But my best suggestion is when you find somebody that you connect with or you enjoy what they do and you're looking for non-entertainment and you're looking for information, stick with that person 
or that, you know, one or two people or a group of folks, when you spread it even further than that, it starts to get a little cloudy and so will your aquarium. Some people love to see people fail because they don't want others to be as good as them because that would mean that they are the same as everyone else. I mean, that is a perspective. For me, it's about relative. I tend to gravitate to people that I relate to. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Like I said, there are people that want you to fail because they don't want you to be with them, right? I get that. But at the end of the day, the folks that are doing this, that have been doing this for six plus years, aren't really providing you with horrible, horrible information. And if they have given you wrongs, they have righted them along the way. We just have to understand that just because it's flashy and it's great doesn't mean that it's the right information or the information for you. Just because somebody sets up 40 aquariums in their garage and some two by fours doesn't mean that that's the same way you do it because maybe you want to do it like Cunningham Cichlids. He has some beautiful setups, some stands and some larger tanks to do his breeding and some holding and selling his all his fish food and stuff like that. Maybe that's the way you want to do it, but you didn't want to do it with all the plywood and the cement bricks. We're individualists, right? We can put out ideas but the idea is you can emulate somebody and that's good, right? Emulation is okay, but doesn't mean that everything that you're going to do from that person is going to work the same way. Even the same products. And I get it. For all the, let's see, bum, bum, bum. It's, uh, I'm going to read some comments here. Uh, that's why I don't touch anything. Seems to work out for me. <laughs> I will always say 90% view, 10% touch. That's the way anything should be. Anything. The more, the more we fiddle dill in it is the more issues we have. So let's, let's get to some nitty gritty. I want you to tell me what are some, what are some experiences that you've had that kind of emulate what's happening in what we're talking about. And how did you fix it? Like if you had a cloudy aquarium, what were the steps you took to figure it out? Uh, I believe there can be confusion between some of the old ways of doing things compared to some of the new ways. Absolutely. It's, it's, um, it's a difference in time, right? Um, I was giving some talks when we were able to travel like crazy. And um, I remember asking, you know, uh, give me some methods of the way you cycle aquariums, right? And you get, ah, I've been doing this for the years. I squeeze a sponge filter into my new aquariums. Boom. Or I take a sponge filter from another aquarium and boom. So now as an aquarium hobbyist, we want to cycle multiple tanks faster. So we think that we have to use sponge filters. This method works. It really does. And it is effective to take a filter that has been working. It doesn't have to be a sponge filter. It could be a canister. It could be a hang on the back. It could be a sump. And we could shift it to another aquarium or take half of the things and move it to another aquarium to get it to cycle faster. This is true. There is a flaw to it. The only flaw is you can introduce something to that new aquarium. Now, some will say, I'm the best there ever was and the best there'll ever be. So there's no issues in my tanks, you see. But there is a possibility that you can transfer an issue, a parasite, bacteria that is not wanted in that new aquarium. However, there is a method that you can use to start an aquarium within 24 hours or as little as four days. And there are products on the market from Dr. Tim's, Fritz, Seachem, Aquaforest. They're out there, Microbacter. They, they work. They're not chemicals and they're not any voodoo magic. They're legit bacteria that will cycle your tank faster than what it would take if you just didn't do anything. So that's two methods. You can use an old filter you can use bottled bacteria. But did you know that there is another way to do it? Matter of fact, two ways. You could just let that aquarium sit. 
and just let that aquarium naturally have bacteria because there's some bacteria in your source water. Unless you're using RODI water, then granted, there's not going to be any. But if you're using natural water, at some point, bacteria will get into that aquarium. Or you could do the fish cycle. You can slowly introduce fish that will tolerate small amounts of ammonia with pH that isn't so bad, as long as you're detoxifying it, and slowly add the fish. And magically, your aquarium will cycle. So which way is the right way? It's up to you. Do you have the money for bottled bacteria? That's one. Do you have the time for a cycle with no fish? That's two. Do you have the ability to have patience and to slowly gather the fish that you want? That's three. Or do you have another aquarium that you know you have no risk of transferring anything bad to it and you can move that filter, which one of the reasons why I have redundancy in all of my aquariums, to move a filter of some sort to that new aquarium and get it started. More than one way. Which way works for you? Whatever way it is, I highly recommend that you stay the course on that. And now you can dose and do a million other things. It's like keeping, somebody said, I use Fritz for cycling my saltwater aquarium. It was fast and it worked. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, I have a reef aquarium. It's in my living room. I don't dose anything. Can you? Absolutely. Do I need to? Absolutely not. It depends on your desired outcome. It's the same thing with, you know, African cichlids. Do you need salt? Do you need buffer? Do you need all of these things? It depends on your aquarium, your water, you know, plants. I don't dose any fertilizers in my plants in my Congo tank. Why? Because I don't have to. I don't use those. Specific. I don't need CO2 because I'm not achieving something like that. I want something that's practical for me, there's, right? There's so many different ways. I don't even have dirt in that aquarium. I use sand and my plants are doing fine. Different ways. So that's, it's so crazy. This hobby is amazing. You folks are amazing. Information can be a little hazy at times. When I started breeding angels, I tried doing what I saw on YouTube and failed at three different ways from three different people. I found a fusion of all three and was a winner for all three. I'm not patient. I used established media or bottled bacteria. Depends when buying new fish. I set up quarantine tank a few weeks before, but if a sick fish, I usually take my sponge out and use stability. And that's true. If you're setting up a new aquarium and you're buying all your fish at one time and you're using bottled bacteria, really, it's not going to matter if you quarantine those fish or not, in my opinion, because they're all coming from probably the same place and all going in the same location. At the end of the day, if you have an established aquarium, it's highly recommended to do those things and to actually quarantine those fish. But what is it we're quarantining for? Are we medicating? Should you medicate? I don't medicate because I don't want to give them something that I don't know what the issue is. So I wait to find out if there is an issue and then I can medicate or I'm just observing for about four weeks if I do that. But that's my choice. I still recommend quarantining. Um, Fritz Monster 360 is 100% heterotrophic bacteria. Yes. So Monster 360 or Monster 460 is a bacteria that helps break down sludge, organic waste. Yes. It can be used to cycle an aquarium, but it takes far longer and it is definitely not a very, very good quality uh, bacteria for consuming ammonia. It takes way too much time. Fritzyme 7 and 9 or Turbo Start, which has to be refrigerated, is nitrifying bacteria, autotrophic bacteria. And that bacteria is very, very efficient at consuming ammonia, breaking it down to nitrites. However, it does need a little bit of phosphates. Dr. Tim's, I believe said, and granted, I don't work for any of these companies. Dr. Tim said, well, you have to have a specific bacteria in your aquarium. Honestly, if it cycles the aquarium and does what it says it does, I don't care what bacteria that is quote unquote good. 
that happens six months from now that's there because it potentially could evolve anyways. Um, somebody said, do, 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 do. I saw stability. Yeah. Take my, okay. If a sick fish, I usually take my sponge out and use stability. Stability is a concoction of multiple different bacterias. I should probably do a video on bacteria and maybe not do talking anymore and just give you guys my talking, uh, speech or presentation on bacteria. Um, if that's something that you want, leave it in the comment. Yes. I would love to see your video on bacteria and what it can do. Um, is too much algae bad? It depends. It depends on what kind of algae. It depends on where, what your aquarium looks like. And is it hurting? Is it taking over plants or is it taking over corals? It really depends, but algae is great. I love algae on my rocks. I love algae on certain things because it helps consume excess nutrients, but it really depends on what it is. And that really depends on I can hear my dog squeaking a squeaker. Um, it really just depends on, on what it is. Is it ugly and unsightful for you? Then yeah, it's bad. I had a big algae blob in the middle of my tank, but I cleaned it with a siphon. Great. That's good. Why is it happening? I mean, really, we have to get to the root cause. If there's a cause, there's an effect, but that cause happened from something. And what was it? Maybe it's too much light. Maybe it is excess nutrients. Maybe it was too warm of water right? So where did the excess nutrients come from? Was it too much feeding? Hmm? Was it too much supplementation? The light, is it too much ambient light? Is it too much light that's coming from a source? Is it a combination of both? Is my water too warm? I think 80 degrees is too warm in an aquarium that's fresh water. I, I, don't, I don't care. It's too warm. Keep it at 78 max. I just, 80 is too high in my opinion. Matter of fact, this aquarium, I think, sits at 76. That one sits at 78. My saltwater aquarium sits at 79. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. Bro, I, was, I will never, ever use a product to sankle a tank guy, but then I used Fritz Sign 7, and now I'm a believer. I got to address some of my older videos. But yeah, that's the idea. Like, I will tell you that bacteria in a bottle is not voodoo science. It's not like the witch doctor. It's legit. It's the bacteria that will be in your aquarium six months from now already ready to go and work. It's convenience, but it also can be an insurance piece. If you're adding a very expensive fish or a lot of fish, you want to make sure that you have enough bacteria colonizing to ensure that your cycle is still cycling. Because if you have a spike in one and you don't have enough bacteria to consume it, well, you're going to have a spike in ammonia, stress the fish, potentially have some issues of some sort, and you could have mitigated it with something else. Hmm? That's your choice. Thank you so much. Should I switch to 76 degrees? What kind of fish do you keep? I don't have any information. I'm just saying I like 76, 76 to 78. I just don't like 80 degrees and too much light. I safely raise my pH using holy rock. Well, you stabilize your pH using Holy Rock, but remember pH fluctuates based on a bunch of different variables. It's because there's a window like five feet from my tank. Reduce your light. Reduce your light. Reduce your artificial light from your source that you're providing by turning it on and allow the ambient light to help or block out the ambient light and have your light source the main factor. There's so much stuff. There's so much stuff, folks. I mean, there's so many different variables when it comes to something, right? I'm going to cook brownies tonight. What? Best brownies. Hot girl shoe. Beep. Done. 42 billion search results for best brownies. What? Yeah, 42 billion. I made that number up, by the way, because 99% of statistics are made up just like this one. <laughs> um, but no, if you're interested in getting products and things like that, I dropped a link. Um, it helps my boy John out right here, formerly known as KG Tropicals. Uh, that's a relationship where you, we used to butt heads a long time ago, and now we have a cohesive, synergistic relationship. <laughs> um 
Does anybody have any questions? What's best for you? I like chewy brownies. Absolutely. Hard brownies. I like, I like a little, I like a little crust around it though. And then you get to that ooey, gooey and moist center. Uh, thank you for helping me. I'll switch it to 76 degrees and try to close my window a little more. Absolutely. And you could probably cut back feeding if you're feeding too much. I don't know why I just looked at the microphone. Um, does anybody have any questions? Has anybody watched the video from Sunday? Please do so. Share this video. Get this information out. I think it will help a lot of folks. Um, I really have always been on a mission to provide. Deborah. you didn't have to do that $5 for brownies. I now want brownies. I don't like nuts in my brownies either, by the way. Um, I've always been on a mission to provide the best possible information. And what works for me. And this is the same situation that I'm giving you. I'm not always going to be right for you. And I can see that. Some videos I put out, people are like, you suck, guy. And then some videos, they're like, oh, my goodness, thank you. This was what I needed. Can't be. I'm not looking for a million subscribers. What I'm looking for is information that can be used time and time again and that works for people. Information that whether it's motivation, inspiration, quality information, or maybe it's a product that they need to use. I don't know. But it, as long as it helps one person for me, it's a successful video. Um, have saltwater tanks. I'm going to try my hand, excuse me, in fresh water, a cichlid tank. How long should I let it cycle for with bacteria and feeder fish? I wouldn't use feeder fish. And the reason I wouldn't use feeder fish is there's a risk that you are going to put in some sort of issue. So if you're looking to spend money on feeder fish, just get yourself a bottle of bacteria. Dr. Tim's, Stability and Prime together. You're going to need Prime anyways, chances are. Um, or my favorite in cycling an aquarium really fast is absolutely going to be Turbo Start. It's refrigerated. It can get up to 80 degrees um, and you just add it and then add some fish and you're ready to rock and roll. That's it. Just make sure that whatever water you have in there, if there is a ton of ammonia, that you neutralize it with some sort of, if there's an abundance of it, with a uh, water conditioner. It doesn't matter what it is. Say, Jay Wilson, are you in Texas? Have you ever caught a Texas cichlid? I am in Oklahoma now, and I currently have not ever caught a Texas cichlid. <laughs> um, but yes, bacteria needs an ammonia source. Autotrophic bacteria needs an ammonia source. I'm going to do a video on it because I don't think there's really a good video um, that's ever been done. Will a raise of pH from 7.4 to 8 plus shock African cichlids? Fast? Absolutely. Any quick movement of anything, ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, pH, anything will shock a fish. It has to be done gradually. And thanks HV809 for that super chat. When using Fritz, when do you test your water to get an accurate reading? So many steps to get skipped. So what I do is I will, um, I will absolutely test to make sure there's ammonia. If not, you can buy an ammonia source and that's either fish, you can add food, or you can buy ammonia chloride. But I will test for ammonia. That's really all I test for. I'm not a huge pH tester unless I have a sink right? And it come, and a sink means a drop uh, from a source water. So what I do is I, in freshwater, I'm adding fish right away because my movement isn't drastic. So as long as there's an ammonia source, fish, turbo start goes in, fish go in, we're ready to rock. And I'll probably test water if I have strips or the master test kit. I'll probably test every couple days uh, to make sure everything's in line. But I'm also adding water conditioner to detoxify. I'm not pulling the ammonia out. I'm actually just detoxifying it. Jay, have you seen live bacteria in Dr. Tim's? Yeah, Dr. Tim's has live bacteria. Um, I see has them not refrigerated, but Turbo Start is. So there's a difference. And this is why I'm going to do the video. Because I think what I'm going to do is take the presentation that I had, which was very focused on Fritz products, 
And I'm going to talk about all of the bacteria products based on science. Non-refrigerated autotrophic bacteria, ammonia consuming bacteria. If it is not refrigerated, it just isn't in a big concentration. So you're probably going to have to buy more of it to get to the concentration level of a refrigerated product. Does that make sense? So you have to find out what's readily available and what works for you. The refrigerated product is going to probably cost you more because of the refrigeration to get it to you. There's more supplies. However, the concentration level is far different, like massively different. And if somebody said I had an autotrophic bacteria A or an autotrophic bacteria B, and this one is better than this, honestly, if it's refrigerated, chances are you have far more concentration level than what you do is non-refrigerated, right? Because it has to be stabilized to have a shelf life to sell, which is typically a year. So it adds a buffer of some sort to feed that bacteria. The other bacteria is just massive concentration. And as soon as you add it, it's good to go. And it has a lesser shelf life because it's a more abundant amount of bacteria. Does that make sense? Now, stability or products that take 10, 12 days or reduce, reduce organics, waste, nitrates, help consume them. Those products are called heterotrophic bacteria. I'm giving you very basic terminology. And those heterotrophic bacteria consume organic waste. They can live forever in a spore form. And then when you add them to water, poof, that's why you see um, probiotics. Perfect example. In your yogurt, in a pill form, for an aquarium, it's the same thing. However, if you have them in a liquid form, they have a much longer shelf life. This bacteria can convert to eat ammonia, but they're, they're not efficient. They die off and they take far longer. So I hope that kind of gives you an idea. When you're looking for a quick start bacteria, you're looking for a bacteria that does it in, in a few days. That is the true autotrophic consuming bacteria. Those are the ones that are really finding the dark, cooler, high oxygenated environment with ammonia, little bit of phosphates, and they're just nom, 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 eating it up. It has buffer to keep it shelf stable and ultimately last longer. Absolutely. So when medicating fish using antibacterial medications, should I add stability to add back beneficial bacteria? Well, you have to know if <laughs> that medication is going to disrupt your bacterial colony. And honestly, stability has a lot more heterotrophs than it does autotrophs. So I would find a cycling bacteria to help provide you uh, that, that abundance. And that's a great question, Kenji, because a lot of folks just do this and they don't care. They just medicate and they go, oh my goodness, my fish died and it was because of medication. Yeah, that's not the case. The medication killed your bacteria, but that's because you weren't paying attention if it was gram negative or gram positive uh, in terms of medication. So lots of stuff, lots of stuff, lots of information can be had all over the internet. And I greatly appreciate you taking the time out of your day. Do me a favor, check out that website. Thank you much for, I mean, seriously, thank you so much for the super chat. It means a lot. Um, it, it really does. I appreciate you. I'm going to be doing a giveaway on Instagram. So if you're not already following, it's probably a good idea to do that. We're going to be giving away a lot of great things on Instagram. And as always, if you found information in this video or you even found entertainment, hit the like button, subscribe, share this with somebody, share it with a friend, share it in a group, tell them, hey, go check out this weird guy. It just so happens to work for CJ, the best pump company in the world. And yeah, this is what I enjoy doing. I enjoy live videos. I enjoy editing because it's fun, but the live videos is more interactive. Um, you know, I used to do, uh, Wendy just said, great questions, maybe Q&A lives, Jay. 
I've done that. I've done Ask Away with Jay. That's actually the email for folks to email to get information. Um, I can't always answer them so rapidly. So that's what these are good for. And I always encourage you to, to send your questions in the chat. I can't get to all of them. Yes, YouTube has made it very lucrative to find and get information if you super chat. I get that. I'm not saying that's all I see is super chats because clearly I answer more than just super chats. But the super chats are highlighted. And if you are a member of Jay Wilson's channel, it's also highlighted. So there are a lot of different ways to get information a little bit faster, but you don't have to. Thank you very much for watching, liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting. I greatly appreciate all of it. And honestly, it really means a lot that you folks take time out of your day to listen to my mouth. Cheers to you. Cheers to your family. I hope you have an amazing week. Reach for the stars because if you fall, at least you'll land on the roof. Or if you just reach for a ceiling, you're going to fall right back to the floor. It's my best advice I got for today. If you're going to Reef of Palooza Orlando, I will be there. I will also be at Aquashella Orlando. I hope to see you there. Stop by the CJ booth. I'll continue to update you through Facebook and Instagram and stay tuned for a video coming, as always on Sunday, for some really nitty gritty stuff. I'll talk to you later. I'll